It has a skull's carburetor cleaner in it. That's gross. Okay. So anyway, I can push air through it, so it's fine. It's not plugged. Yuck. <clears throat> that should have dried out by now. <laughs> Hello, all my YouTube people. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for being here. I'm working on this Super B carburetor today. I've got my rebuild kit, my master rebuild kit that I just ordered from SNS. First things first is the bowl. I tried to find a video or something of someone else like redoing one of these carburetors, and there was no videos of it, but I'll have a video out of it. Here we go. Just a little tap. So there's a couple things on here that are not supposed to come off. Like this Preston jet here. You're not supposed to take it out. Pretty sure this is half inch. There we go. There we go. This pack here does not come with any jets in the master rebuild kit. I don't know, I feel like with a name like that, you'd expect it to be full of everything you need, but it's not. And that's okay because we can clean jets. This one here is the idle set, and then this one here is the enrichner, and this one here is the throttle. The idle speed screw, you can take that right out. And then the enrichner one, uh, SNS says you can take it out, but don't take it apart any further. Just take it out. Okay, so that unscrews from the body of the carburetor. Just pull it out, clean it, put it back in. They also say that there's a lot of little like pressed in bits and stuff on these carburetors that you're not supposed to try to remove. Now I'm gonna take this out. This should just, just unscrew easily. So you wanna keep the throttle arm on here so that you can actually turn your throttle shaft inside and pull your butterfly valve out. Just a bit of a wiggle. That spring is out and now it just slides off. And now with this whole thing can just slide right out. When you have it open up like this, you want to just check where the valve is constantly rubbing against when it opens and closes. And you just want to make sure there's no wear in there. You can kind of see where the valve has hit the choke there. There is a little bit of wear. I think what they really want you looking for is making sure that the aluminum hasn't actually been like worn away. So you don't want any kind of like a, a dip that's been worn into the aluminum from the valve rubbing constantly on it. That's it for the main body of the carburetor. Get the float out of here. So this flow pin looks like it's never been replaced on this thing because you can see it's actually worn these points thinner where the float actually pivots on there. That's good they give you a new one of those in there at least. I'm gonna clean whatever I've got in here. I'm just gonna soak it a little bit. Baby toothbrushes are very handy for this kind of stuff because they're super soft and they get into little places where more coarse brush won't. For the jet, I've actually got this little files for cleaning torch tips, and these work great for getting into these holes in the jet, which I think these ones are all pretty good. I just left some of the parts and stuff to soak overnight. So I'm going to replace the throttle shaft bu bushings because there is a little bit more play in the old throttle shaft with these old bushings than what I think you probably would want. The intermediate jet here, it is meant to come out, but I'm not gonna take it out. I would have to use pliers or something like that to get a good grip on this to actually take it out. So I'm not gonna take it out because I can blow air through it perfectly fine. It's not plugged or anything like that. So the emulsion tube is pressed in. I'm not gonna take that out because SNS says not to, it's not plugged or anything like that. So I'm gonna take these bushings out. And now the instructions say that there's one end on the new bushings that's gonna be the starting end. 
So you can see it's indicated here on the bushing by this line. So that's gonna be the end that I want going in first. Now I need to just drift these old bushings out. So I'm gonna be pushing these out the same way that they would have went in. And how I'm gonna do that is I've got this Allen head bolt here that's actually the perfect size. So it fits in there perfectly over those bushings. I'm gonna put this on the inside. Just have it sitting in there. And then I've also got this Allen key that I cut the ends off of. And then I'm just gonna drift it out like this, holding it in my hand so my hand can absorb the impact. My motor skills I feel like haven't developed properly. <laughs> there we go. So you wanna inspect your the holes where the bushings go in and make sure that they are not worn enough to actually be like elongated. So now that I've got those bushings out, I'm going to just continue to clean the thing Next step with this thing, now that it's all clean, is putting those new throttle shaft bushings back in. And like I said, they do have one side of these, but one end of these bushings that's more narrow in diameter than, than the other. And the narrow end is the end you wanna start with. So I'm using the same Allen head bolt that I used to push the bushings out. So I've just got this quarter inch piece of copper tubing that fits tightly over the thread. So this Allen bolt that I'm using as a drift and this copper tubing also fits nicely inside of these bushings. Now that's nice and centered in there. Okay, my bushings are in. Now, now that's done, I can just start putting everything back together. So this end with the slot is where the spring goes and then the spring goes in that hole there. And another thing too that I'm gonna do, I noticed is this slot has a little bit of a burr on it. So I'm gonna just clean that burr off with some really fine 2000 grit sandpaper here. So I just wanna get rid of the sharp edges that I feel so that everything will slide together nice and easy. Put the spring in first, and then you'll push the shaft up into the spring. Push it up into the spring. So now the spring is on and you can see. So this is still gonna have spring tension even when the valve is closed. And now you wanna turn the shaft all the way so that the slot is at a 90 degree angle from the throat of the carburetor. First of all, you'll notice that this valve is actually beveled. The top and bottom edges are beveled so that when it snaps back, the beveled edges are going uh, against the throat of the carburetor. So I don't know if you can see those bevels or not. And then also, this is a really tight fit. So it needs to be perfectly centered and these holes need to be perfectly level or it's not gonna go in very easily. There we go. And I want to let it close slowly so that nothing gets jammed up. Here we go, now it's in. Screw this sucker in. And you wanna be careful to not strip out the threads on the shaft because or else you're kind of screwed if you do that. <laughs> well, you'll be getting a new shaft, that's for sure. And now I'll put my throttle arm on. And when you do this up, you want it to be flat there because this screw here is gonna be to adjust your throttle. Do this up tight now. There we go. Now I'm putting my idle speed screw in. Make sure you have that spring on there. And then this gets screwed in just till it lightly seats, lightly seated, and then we'll adjust it from there. Discharge tube. So that's going in here like that. It just stops right there. Tighten that up a bit. They give you two needles. So there's two styles of bowls. This is the style of needle that my bowl uses. Now I'm good to adjust my float. Now that I've got it in, there are different adjustments for the float depending on whether you have a solid mounted engine 
or a rubber mounted engine. The way that you want to do this for a solid mount engine, you want to hold your bowl upside down like this, and then you're going to take a measurement from the highest point of the of the float, so straight across from where the needle seats, and you want it to be an eighth of an inch below the gasket surface. So you don't want your float coming up past. So this obviously needs to be adjusted a little bit because it is coming down past the gasket surface. And this adjustment can be done. You're gonna bend this little ting in there that's holding the needle. You're just gonna bend it whichever direction it needs to go to make that set at the proper height. That's an eighth of an inch from the gasket surface to the top of the float. Now I will set this as it is all meant to be set. Three quarter of a turn to one and a quarter turns from lightly seated. I'm just gonna go one full turn because that's like the halfway point between the, those two suggested adjustments. This is just at the engagement point here on my idle speed screw. So it's only half a turn clockwise, that much. So that's one full turn out. This is half of a turn clockwise, half a turn in from just the engagement point. So this carburetor is obviously missing some things and I wouldn't have known that without actually going through it and looking at instructions and stuff and figuring out how to rebuild this thing. It's missing another one of these little nubbies it's missing the jet there too. It's all clean, it's all fresh, it's all put back together. It's got a bunch of new parts in there. And I can officially say that I have rebuilt a Super B carburetor. And there you go, guys. Brand spanking new Super B carburetor. I think that that is it for this video, guys. Like I always say, if you like what you see, or if you just like me, or even if you don't like me, but you like my bikes, then like this video, comment down below, please, and hit the little notification bell if you want to be notified, and I will catch you all on the flip side. My people, peace. <laughs>